Okay, now I'd like to show a rumba uh, made famous by Paco de Lucia. Um, of course, he was very famous for Entre los Aguas, a uh, very famous rumba. And uh, a lot of the stuff Gypsy Kings do also is based on uh, that type of song structure where we have a repeating cycle of chords and then improvise um, falsetas over top. Um, the one that I think is really interesting is when he tried to combine this piece, Entre los Aguas, with a composition by Aldi Meola, and they did a kind of a fusion. And he later adapted this um, to his live shows and in several formats. Um, so the introductory uh, melody, or falsetta we'll call it, is by Aldi Meola called Mediterranean Sundance. And it's just used sort of as an introduction to get into the uh, Entre dos Aguas uh, type rumba. However, uh, Paco himself even changed it along the way and composed a new rumba called Rio Ancho and then again combined this with the Aldi Meola intro and I find that this is a very um, definitive rumba that um, people like to, to work on. So I'm here uh, by Aldi Meola called Mediterranean Sundance. It begins with an arpeggio on the treble strings, the third string, second and first. And we're basically outlining a small triad here with a B natural on the fourth fret of the third string, first fret um, C with your index finger, and the open E. It kind of gives the flavor of a, an A minor ninth of this, but we don't actually have to have a bass note on this. It's just the melody on the, on the treble strings, okay? Okay, so the way we introduce this, Aldi Mule plays with a pick, so he plays. So what Paco does is a nice flamenco style arpeggio here. And what I'm doing here is I'm doing an IMA arpeggio to begin and ending on the thumb. So basically this, without the left hand. So I have the thumb and innings on, on the same string. Okay, so we do this chord and it sounds like we get that nice dissonant sound. If you want, you can also do this kind of thing where you do a to, to begin it. And then do the second note with that arpeggio, or you can do and do two of them like that. So um, uh, there are versions of it where the, the golpe comes in really strong in the beginning like this, which is nice. So you do the same thing here by you know, moving down to the second fret on the A. And again, you do this IMA with a with a thumb, uh, ending on that note. Okay. Or now, what I do here after I do this arpeggio, I'm going to do a slow arpeggio IM on the trebles here, and then we have the third string open. It's the next note. Again, a little bit slower. Or you can do the arpeggio twice. Okay. Now the next part, uh, we're going to come up with a hammer. So from the open G, I have P I M I like this. And then I'm going to do a hammer, G to A, and then I have index on the second string and middle on the first string. And I'm going to do that twice, like that pretty fast, double time, what we were doing before. Okay, and repeat that phrase. jump down here, you can jump down either with index or I like to jump down with the middle finger. And then I'm going to put the pinky on the fourth fret of the fourth string, F sharp, and I'm going to play a PIMA arpeggio, 16th note rhythm. Now I'm going to come back, so this is like an up and down arpeggio, however we're going to change the rhythm here and do triplet, or a slower uh, rhythm than we just did. Triplet uh, for the third string, fourth, fifth, 
Now we've run out of fingers to play the E string, so we're gonna use the thumb again. So that's a little tricky to get used to. And if you want it all ringing, you don't do, you don't have to do a rest stroke. We'll do a tirando on this. Okay. And we're gonna do a uh, raqueo like abanico to, to uh, answer that phrase, okay? Now, that's it, and we're gonna repeat it. This is the basic intro that Aldi Meola had composed um, that he did with Paco. Um, let me show you how the rhythm goes. We start on the downbeat. We lead the, that last beat with the, the G there. Back to the downbeat. Okay, so we do the 16th notes, triplet. Okay, so important to keep track of this beat because it ties all of the rest of the rumba together with that. So after you do it twice, we're gonna come up here to the seventh position and do a full bar E minor. And I'm doing a, an abanico like this. What I'm doing here is instead of a triplet, I'm doing like a double, uh, like a galloping, da -da -dum. and I'm leaving my hand down here and doing the last stroke uh, as an eighth note. Accent, okay? So next comes uh, this kind of bluesy rock type melody. Um, <clears throat> Paco plays it in this position like this. So basically holding that E minor shape and then using the middle and ring here on the third and second string with, with the pinky on the 10th fret, slide up and you get that little bluesy fifth in there when you slide. And then we have the D on the 10th fret Back to the 12th fret B and end with a bar with your pinky up at the E, okay? When you do this, you go back down to the 5th position, play a D7. Um, I like to use a fingering a little different. I got used to playing this kind of bluesy, whenever I hear those kind of bluesy runs, I revert to my electric guitar days and I do a bit of a simpler left hand. Thing. I do the 9th fret and the 12th fret, and then I slide it up with my middle finger, and then I do the same cross string here, 10th fret with the middle finger. So it's up to you which fingering you feel more comfortable with, if you prefer this kind of using the pinky, or if you want to do it this way. Okay. After the D chord, we do this thing that seems pretty simple, but it's actually really tricky. Um, we're gonna do par parallel fifths, like power chord, they would call this in rock guitar, on the treble string, okay? So on the second and first string. We're, but you gotta be careful when you do this, it's easy to kind of get out of the uh, fret wire when you're moving really fast. So you're gonna go targeting with the index finger. I usually target with the index so I know, um, uh, so, so my eyes don't have to jump around if I'm looking down at the fingerboard. Because we have a big jump here down a minor third. We're going to the 10th fret, the 8th fret, and then the 5th fret. Okay? Okay, after the D chord, we have the two notes again E and G. Or you can do it up here. Same idea. This one's a little easier because we don't have to jump as far. So I'll do the 9th fret and 12th fret, back to the 9th, and then the power, or the 5th, sorry. So that little, uh, basically it's a pentatonic sounding uh, scale, harmonized in fifths. Okay, so the important thing again is the timing. Or if you do it this way. Okay, so we have these moving in triplets. Sorry. So that's what happens if you're not careful. 
Okay, I, you can either use your pinky for this spread, which I think is a little safer. For me, anyway, it's safer, but you can also do it with the ring finger. The reason I think it's safer is because I can quicker spread these guys out than these guys. These guys are a little bit awkward to, to spread when you're jumping really fast, so the pinky does a better job at that, I think. Okay. After that phrase, we have a C chord, and you can do a full C chord like that, or you can do the same rhythm that you did on the D, like this. Okay, and then we're going to do another kind of triplet phrase with these fifths. Okay, this one's a little bit easier than this one that jumps a third, a minor third, because it's just uh, whole steps all the way down, okay? So one, two, three, three of these on the fifth fret, one on the uh, third fret, and then one on the first fret. Then we come back up to the third, and then down to the first, and we end with this uh, open B and the F sharp. You can also end there if you want with a B chord. And the reason um, this part is real important to lock into the rhythm because this is where we begin our Roomba phrase with the very fast piccato. Um, this one is a pretty big challenge, I think. I see a lot of people doing it and not really keeping the, the tempo or the, because they're, they're not feeling the Roomba when they're doing these fast runs. So I'm going to show you the trick for keeping that together. Uh, but let me play this intro theme one more time very slow up to this point so we, we've got it all together. <laughs> So when we get here to the B, this is where we really have to start feeling the Roomba again. The, this is our Roomba pattern at this tempo, right? If we actually do that and as the start to the piccato, it gets us on the right track. So if we just take this chord, you can do the same thing. That's real important. You hear the accents that correspond with our one, two, three, four accent. And this will really help you lock in when we do the fast piccato. So you can either do it with this or you can actually strum rumbo right here. Now here we're gonna stop because we gotta jump in with the piccato. The piccato is pretty simple musically or what the notes are, but the timing is the trick, okay? So the first piccato is this five notes up and down. Uh, second fret, third fret, fifth fret, and back down, okay? So you gotta come in on that with the right rhythm, okay? Now, our next downbeat is gonna be the next piccato. It's gonna be this note, D sharp, uh, fourth fret, fifth fret, and seventh fret. So basically the same shape, or same piccato phrase, but on the B string, up a fret, okay? Now we do this one on the beat. Getting these two together, I think, is the real key to, the, to getting the timing for this. So you start with the Roomba phrase, and make sure you really nail this one on the beat so that way you, you get locked in. Because what happens next is we repeat this one, same exact piccato, and then we do a, a 16th note phrase. Now these are just a, a four and one. When we get here and we slide up, Aldi Mili does a slide like this, and I've seen Paco do it too, where it's just a single note. But this is where the Roomba comes back in again. So if you want, you can actually literally just get back into the Roomba and really keep this thing together. If you want to do it that way with Roomba strum, you just slide the pinky back here from five to, to four and set up your B chord. So instead of just playing this melody, we're gonna do the chord, okay? 
and that'll help you really lock it in. So let me do that um, picado part, and you can see how it's a good exercise for both training your picado and just getting this thing to be in rhythm, okay? So. If you just repeat that one over and over, that's basically the how the picado phrase is working. I'll do it a, a little slower. Okay. Now I'm double timing the foot there. The idea of this is to have the foot going slower because these are going to go really faster tempo. When you're practicing slow, you can double time the foot. There I'm just going to an E minor instead of the B chord. So uh, when Paco de Lucia originally recorded this with Aldi Miola, when he came to this ending melody, he literally does the rumba there to kind of keep everything real tight. And Aldi Miola just has to play the, just the melody. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's really cool just to play a melody sometimes as so long as you carry the rhythm correctly. So what I hear people do a lot of time making an error on this, they're trying to go too fast and they rush this part. Just that simple F sharp. That has to be the Roomba feel. For it all to lock together, okay? On the second one, um, um, Same thing on the on the last part. That note has to be timed just right to lock into the Roomba accent. Okay, so I think learning it first by doing the actual Roomba is the way to really internalize it the best way. Roomba. The other thing is the foot. When we play rumba, you want to have, especially if you want to do a faster tempo rumba, you, you want to have the foot at half time. Okay, so like this. So I'm basically at, uh, doing the foot on what would be one, three, four, five. One and five, get the foot tap. This, I think, is really key when you start speeding up and keeping all that stuff together, that especially when when you're doing fast subdivisions, is feeling a slower tempo. So when we do this uh, thing with the Mediterranean Sundance intro, with the slower foot tap, I think that's a big key point for getting it really tight, especially if you have two players.